All right, friends, um, welcome back to my channel. My name is Greg, and I'm the founder of Your Inception. I have Dr. Susan here today with me, and she works as a holistic medical consultant. And today we're going to be talking about many cool things. We're going to talk about adaptogens, adaptogenic herbs. We'll talk about hacking um, your morning routine and why is this important, how you can do it. And of course, we'll also talk about some other stuff. Uh, we mentioned Bulletproof Coffee. Apparently, we have a solution there that is better than drinking bulletproof coffee um so yeah um it's gonna be super interesting and um let's do this susan hello it's good to have you hello, here Greg. <laughs> it's good to be back yeah this right it's been it's been a long time since we last talked yeah many countries ago many countries ago yeah um and many types of COVID to go right many variations <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um morning routine yeah why should why should people hack a morning routine like should, should they have some kind of routine or well usually it's the easiest one to hack because during lunch during the day your day gets away from you and so some people end up doing lunch early skipping lunch pushing lunch back so trying to have something healthy set for lunch can be more difficult for most people i find when i was dealing with clients and patients supplements in the in the daytime get left out supplements mm. in the morning always were remembered so hacking that routine was key the other thing that i've noticed and we talked briefly is if it's not pleasant compliance goes down absolutely if it's something someone enjoys and it's beneficial you have that higher roi so you get a good return on your investment so if you're putting in a teeny little bit of effort making what you're already doing better and more beneficial and taste good, you're going to, you're going to do it. And dinner is another time or evening you can hack that routine. Again, it depends how fatigued people are. And right now, so many people just come home and crash. And so that's why I don't tend to try to hack that end as well either. But morning is prime time to get stuff done and do it properly and set the day in motion on the right foot too. Because by altering the morning routine, you're setting yourself up for success. You have higher performance, your executive function, which is you know your memory, your recall, your energy level, your focus, everything is better. And you just, you feel good. And then you can actually start building on better habits as you go but just starting with that morning base being solid you're golden yeah I, I totally agree i mean if if you do things right in the morning then everything else is easier and of course um optimizing your evening routine is, is important as well but um you have to start somewhere and uh, as like you said starting in the morning is probably the most important thing um or the best time to start um yeah, it's the it is it's easiest of course yeah like in the morning you still have some brain power left or you should have some brain power so <laughs> maybe not but at least you've got that time it seems true that true that yeah. unless you've hit that snooze button one too many times well that, that 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 can be quite problematic but um yeah i think that's another topic we can we should talk about that as well uh, why you should <laughs> yeah. never do that ever 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 <laughs> true that so tell me how how can people how can people hack their morning routine like what, what can they do what are some of the best tips you have there? so easy so a lot of people are already doing a morning drink so most people worldwide will do a coffee of some sort mm -hmm. and i don't know the percentage but most people will put something in it so if you're already doing something and your audience, my audience, they already have been trying to make things better. They're, they're educated, they're interested, they're doing things. And many of them have tried bulletproof coffee and have liked kind of the added energy, the added brain power. And so when you're looking at neurotropic and energy, and then you add in, what I like to add in is adaptogens. I hate to say this, but as modern people, we are more and more stressed and we are getting a chronic stress because there's constant, I don't, 
I won't want to say interference, but there's a constant attachment to our digital devices, our work, and everything else. Where when I was young, because I'm old, <laughs> uh -huh. you go out and you would, you know, you didn't have a phone with you or a laptop or anything. You would go out, you go for a hike, you shut down. Nowadays, I have, you know, a phone with me or something and I try to turn it off, but you know, occasionally you leave it on, but you always know it's like someone can get a hold of you. You have a constant low level stress a lot of times with work, family, obligations of various kinds where it's gotten worse and worse over the years. So when you're looking at our stress and how our body handles stress and the adapting to stress, there's these herbs and food products that are adapted gins, which help our body adapt to stress better by having your body handle it better. Different adaptogens work different ways. And a lot of the scientific studies don't exactly know the full mode of action, but they'll see, okay, this one is, has, you know, different things that handle the oxidative stress. This one handles the inflammation, this handles this, and they see the neurotransmitter and the other aspects where it's going, oh, with stress, it, they're not going into depression. This is helping the mood. With stress, they're not going into that fatigue state. With stress, they're not seeing the adrenals um, getting fat, basically. They're seeing different things with normal stress response and stress response with adaptogens. So they're seeing there is benefit everything kind of works differently. So getting into the mode of action, we can totally geek out, but we're not gonna go there with, every, with everything. So when you have your coffee drinkers, adding an adaptogen, and my favorite two, because they taste good in coffee, um, it, one is Chaga Mushroom. Um, I'm not advertising this brand, I'm showing Chaga Mushroom. Um, it's, Technically, it's not a mushroom, it's a fungi, but they call it a mushroom. It's yeah. um, it's great. I mean, it does everything. So it's called the king of medicinal mushrooms because it's got the adaptogen qualities. It's studied for pain reduction um, abilities, anti-inflammatory, the um, and of course, immune support. So right now with pandemic situations, getting into cold and flu season, adding in even immune support on top of that layer, bonus. So a scoop of this is great because it already tastes like coffee. So adding it to coffee, you're not changing the flavor. Do you know so, like one scoop, what's that in, in grams or, you know, what the, uh, approximately if you have any idea, otherwise I'll check it out later on. I will, I'll write it down in the recipe. That's that perfect. Yeah. Because that's people um, have asked me. I, it depends depends on how big a cup of coffee you're drinking. Of course, of course. Because <laughs> I really want to make the flavor decent. So if it's a small cup of coffee, I yeah. usually use about a teaspoon. All right, got it. And so um, I am really not one for doing the analytical measurements. I kind of, because it's morning, you just dump, dump, dump. <laughs> and then sometimes I shake it and it's like, too much went in. This is not a problem with this one because of the taste tasting like coffee, you're not going to have a problem. How about Where, the uh, side effects or anything like? With there are no side effects. All right. It's because you're sticking it basically in water. Yeah. Uh, Shaga is a water. Most of the properties that we're looking for with adaptogen are water soluble. All right. Um, when you're using the powder, it's already been double extracted. So that means it's been mm -hmm. The medicinal properties from it has been extracted in water and in alcohol to get the terpenoid um, molecules out that have the other properties that you want that are medicinal. Yeah. So that's the other thing when you're buying it, it's you want it to be um, wild harvested and you want it double extracted. So look into whatever you're buying because quality makes a difference. If you're buying some sort of cultivated one from China, you're not going to get the properties I'm talking about. Yeah. That's kind of with any supplement. You, you kind of have to educate yourself a little bit on the supplements because um, 
in certain supplements, like it's the root or the flower or the leaf that have the medicinal property and some less reputable companies will just throw everything in, grind it up and sell it to you and say, it's got, you know, four grams of this plant in it, but it's not the important part of that plant. Get it. I think it's important to, to tell our followers that because, um, I mean, they mostly care about taking quality supplements and, um, well, I mean, there's no point in taking stuff that's not going to work. Of course, yeah. you're, you don't get any effects, no benefits, and you're just throwing money out of your window. And it's really exactly. not what people should do. And usually the cost difference is not that much. It's a very small amount from some of the cheap ones to the appropriate ones that yeah. have the good amount. So scoop of shaga, uh, scoop of maca. So maca, I love maca. It's got a nutty kind of flavor. So it blends again, really well with coffee. And also if you want to do like a coffee smoothie, it works well. If you want it more milky with ice, do ice kind of thing. This yeah. time of year, Northern hemisphere, we're wanting warm drinks. So <laughs> I'm going to be talking about it being warm. The maca of course has your great, you know, it's kind of known as the sexier because it's got the great hormone balancing. It helps with libido course with stress and the HPA axis stress will go up and your libido goes down because part of your sex hormones are also produced in your adrenals so with the whole feedback system your sex drive your libido will go down so maca will help restore that but the great thing about maca with an adaptogen it's sustained energy so you're going to notice a lot of times people have that coffee and they have that coffee crash. Mm. Maca is going to keep the energy sustained. So it maca works better for sustained energy than, you know, when people want like that little, they're flagging when you're stressed. So they will eat carbs or sweets or have an energy drink. So they'll go. Phew, phew. Exactly. You got to get the spike of energy and then the crash happens. Yeah. And the same thing with just plain coffee, you're going to get that bit of a spike and then you're going to crash adding maca will help mitigate that crash that's amazing so, yeah super nice and the other thing when you're looking at stress and the hpa axis you've got that spike of cortisol that goes up with the stress mm -hmm. spikes the insulin you're going to get higher levels of blood sugar imbalanced you're going to end up with insulin resistance moving into that metabolic syndrome, that weight gain, et cetera, that issue is a big problem. So the shaga will help with that, as well as adding a little bit of cinnamon. Cinnamon cool. is phenomenal. I love a little bit of cinnamon in my coffee. It's going to help with reducing the LDLs, keeping that blood sugar stable. And again, when you keep your blood sugar stable, your energy stays stable. So this combination and then you do the bulletproof aspect with the mct oil for your brain food so you add uh, okay so you add the mct to the, to yeah, the mix. or coconut oil i mean uh, some people yeah. that's the same thing you're just going to get that good fat for the brain mct oil is a little bit fancier a little bit better it it works a certain way but it's fine if you don't you know you can't afford or can't find mct oil where you live Coconut oil is going to still be good brain food. Um, when you're looking at um, a lot of books that are written on helping prevent dementia and Alzheimer's and different things, they talk about just having a scoop of coconut oil per day. That worked amazing in so many studies. So, All right. Yeah. So, um, so I, um, most people like a little bit of kind of cream type thing in their coffee. I do. So, I use an alternative milk. So I'll use either coconut milk, almond milk, or oat milk. Um, you can make a combination to have a really nice flavor. So many different companies now have the barista version mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. oat milk. So, yeah. so you can get like Oatly Barista and you can get organic and good quality. So I just, what makes it easy is I just will warm my oat milk, mm -hmm. throw everything in together, throw my coffee in, do a quick blend because um, Cinnamon and maca will kind of chunk. Ah, no okay. matter how you stir it, you will have little bits. So I just will do a quick blend or do a fork real quick. Okay. And, and that, that does a trick, I guess. That does a trick. Um, 
a handheld blender or dumping it in a blender. It's so perfect. That's so it. pretty much why my coffee's brewing, I throw everything into the warming oat milk. Everything comes out together. It seriously takes no time. And a hack, even with that, you can mix all the ingredients together, the powders, and just make it and do one big scoop, throw it in. That's a good one, yeah. So that people have to measure or like, you know, they can yes. prepare in advance, yeah. I mean, seriously, as long as you're getting in like a, a decent amount of each, you're gonna notice a difference. You'll immediately stop seeing that coffee crash, sustained energy and a better, um, adaptogen, basically you're going to adapt to stress better. So what, what people notice is say you get that normal call from, you know, the, the company, the boss, your coworker, you're not going to have that feeling of that anxiety mm -hmm. as easily. You're not going to have that. I don't have enough time feeling. You're going to be a little bit more calmer, a little bit cooler under pressure. So that's what adaptogens do. They kind of keep you grounded and level-headed so your focus and your energy and your memory just imagine like taking a test and someone screaming at you versus taking a test and having peace calm and substitute you know how that is you're going to think better you're going to remember stuff better it's going to flow if you have that nice serene thing and that's what adaptogens do in your body they're going to make it a little bit more serene so you yeah, go to that empathetic mode exactly i think that that's super important like you mentioned because um quite often uh, people reach out to me and they say you know i've been drinking bulletproof coffee uh for a while and i'm getting all those crashes during the day like at least once per day like mid-afternoon crash or even mid-morning crash if they drink uh, coffee too early in the morning Mm -hmm. and uh and uh, yeah and, and i'm like trying to advise them like you know maybe they should either stop drinking coffee for a while which could help or mm -hmm. maybe just add some adaptogens to the mix um to kind of um it, you know because coffee can really make you super alert for a while it really increase your energy and, and make this spike uh but then obviously there, there, there should be some crash after that you know it just <laughs> something something's gonna happen of course blue profit blue Profit coffee is somewhat better than just drinking a normal cup of coffee uh, mixing L-theanine uh, in can help as well, uh, yep. kind of offset the, the side effects of coffee, uh, but adding adaptogens and making this uh, adaptogen cocktail. Um, yeah, it sounds like the upgraded version of, of Bulletproof Coffee. I'm just not sure what, what Dave Asprey will, will say about it. <laughs> well, the thing is with the Bulletproof Coffee, I mean, because a lot of people also are doing kind of, a lot of people I know, my a lot of my clients, they're trying to stay in ketosis to have that super brain power. So they're fasting, they're having that. Luckily with the butter and the coconut, you are you know, having a little bit more of a buffer on that crash. Yeah. You know, so you're keeping your energy up a little bit more, but it still, it still can make people a little anxious mm. and it still can have a little bit of that, that crash, definitely. That's why when you're adding the adaptogens, some of the other things like the cinnamon, you kind of have a more sustained everything. And it's it's really good. So whether you're fasting or eating a good breakfast, it's gonna work the same. Food, I mean, obviously depending on glycemic index, all these other factors, you can't just say food because if someone's just having a plain bowl of oatmeal, the glycemic, of course, you know, that's yeah. not the best. If they're having oatmeal with like a bunch of nuts on it, you know, you're gonna have, a lower glycemic index. So it's like, just depends. But the, the basic premise of this is really to help people with the neurotropic benefits, the adaptogen main thing, and then just really helping keep that blood sugar stable. And I just, I just, I love this combination for patients because people don't want to give up their coffee. It's a pleasure. And I feel like sometimes a pleasure in your life outweighs some of the negative things. So if you can just make that pleasure beneficial, mm -hmm. you've got a win win. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, it's I think it's kind of hard to convince people to stop drinking coffee and do some other maybe more demanding stuff. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> and this works well with like the alternative coffees too. If you're into like the Dan blend or the Chino 
the whatever it's called the chino the all the different alternative yeah. herbal coffee blends it works just as well with this oh so you can get even, even better it's like <laughs> yeah of course you're gonna get this i mean yeah obviously coffee has some health benefits but are also it, there are some side effects that come with, with drinking yeah, I mean, it. yeah coffee's not horrible it's once no. you start doing the i need i need to have two to three cups and you keep on having more and more during yeah, the day yeah. that's when you see a lot of the more health problems with it someone's just enjoying one cup of coffee i don't see as much of a downside to it and then especially if they're making it better mm -hmm. yeah that's I'm like, okay I, I'm, I'm i'm golden exactly. but i mean a lot of people i will have you know it's like hey can you instead of your second cup of coffee do a green tea or do an herbal blend like a ginseng kind of blend something another adaptogen that has good energy exactly or, exactly. It's like, you know, or a different adaptogen cocktail there's there's other adaptogen cocktails that then feed other parts of the pathways like have vitamin c in it for feeding um, being a major cofactor in your adrenal you know your adrenals and the production of the different um adrenaline cortical steroids all the different things that your adrenals do you have the that huge need for the vitamin c so you know you can do it in different ways but with with you you gave up coffee completely how hard was that well in the beginning it was, it was kind of a challenging um especially because i was used to it and I, I was addicted to it like i think most people out there are you know because if you're drinking it for a while and then you don't get this this effect in the morning this boost of energy and alertness i mean you miss something and it's really hard to focus without without drinking it uh but once you get used to living without coffee then life gets better i think in, in many aspects um so i don't have any problems but i still like i drink uh, altia so i drink green tea that has altian in it. i mm -hmm. drink gerber mate tea and other types of tea so but i try to avoid coffee if i do drink coffee which happens now and then um i kind of ensure that it has kind of a low caffeine uh inside mm -hmm. ju just because for me I i'm a super in general I'm, I'm super energized and alert person like when i wake up in the morning i have lots of energy every morning um and then if i drink like a big cup of coffee you know i get just too alert and i get jittery and then i get like you know nervous and, and so on um and i think many people are like that not not all of them but... many people even people who sometimes wake up really tired it will cause the jittery. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Just because of the way their body reacts with coffee. Exactly. Um, but yeah, living without coffee is, is pretty good. Of course, uh, I'll, I'll try now that this uh, adaptogen cocktail uh, without the real coffee though. Um, but yeah. it definitely sounds, can, can, can people drink this every day? Like, what do you think? Oh also, yeah. 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 I mean, most, most of the things that are in, I mean, people always are like, can you overdose? you can pretty much overdose on anything. However, it's really hard because these are water soluble components. So when your body gets too much, you're gonna pee out things you don't need. Your body is great. I mean, part of adaptogens is great. It's dealing with your homeostasis of your body. Your body's always trying to stay in homeostasis. There's too much stress throws it out of homeostasis. Adaptogens put it back in homeostasis. Mm -hmm. And because it works with your body and you're not adding in like a pharmaceutical or anything else your body can just eliminate what it doesn't need it's a food product for your body so it's really pretty safe um i mean but water i mean they've shown people drank too much and had a problem with overdosing on water so i mean of course. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> overdose on anything but of course, of course you can <laughs> but uh, you're not you're not going to do it with this so if you have it every day the other thing with a, a lot of adaptogens, they get better. They your system um, gets better and better with a longer term use of certain adaptogens, like ashwagandha. Yeah, like yeah. your body works really well. I mean, you notice a difference pretty soon, but after a week or two weeks, it really kicks in and starts working with your body at a much higher level. So. It's kind of one of those things. Our body works most most of our processes in our body are, especially with the stress response, is a negative feedback loop. So when it'll tell certain things, I've got too much or I've got too little, make more, make less, and so you have these safety mechanisms which are great in your body. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Um, yeah, I mean, the, uh, when, when you mentioned the ashwagandha and, and how, you know, you benefit from it if you take it for a while, uh, for a longer period, I think that's really important to mention because, you know, people expect all those magical benefits from all those herbs and, and, and nootropics and whatnot. Um, but the, you get some benefits after a while. So the longer you take them, most nootropics, like especially the natural herbs and stuff like this. Um, the longer you take them. Um, so it's really important to be patient there, not just to um, take some capsules um, and then, um, you know, hope something will happen the day after or like in a couple of minutes. Um, it's it's really better to uh, kind of have real expectations. <laughs> That's, I think, super important. Well, I, mean, like, I tell people, I'm like, okay, if I told you to go to the gym, yeah, and, <laughs> you know, or you're like me and you're a little scrawny or you're overweight or whatever, are you expecting to have all the weight lost or all the muscle built in one day? And you're like, no. I'm like, okay, same thing with a lot of these things that you're doing health benefit wise. Your body is a- adjusting, adapting, changing and, de- and, and getting benefits. Like it's healing different things. Like Ashaga, for instance, because it's anti-inflammatory, it's not going to decrease all the inflammation in your body in one go. It has to take it off bit by bit by bit. Of and a lot of inflammation, you know, has to do with how well, like the neuroinflammation and the body inflammation. And it also benefits digestive system, which, you know, the digestive systems are second brain. And that's, you know, they're linking imbalances in digestion obviously with stress, like anybody with IBD or IBS can tell you stress will trigger Mm. a worse situation with irritable bowel syndrome or disease. Chaga helps with that, but then you're seeing the benefits of that whole second brain effect. So again, that less, you know, gut triggered anxiety, depression, different neurotransmitters that are produced in the whole GI system shift, but it's not going to be all at once. Of course not. Of course not. (laughs) Yeah, players. So, but the thing is, you can still take them, go off them, take them, go off them. And it's not like you're starting from ground zero either. It's the same as a gym. Like if you've worked out for a bit Mm -hmm. and you take a weekend off, you're not going to lose all of that muscle that you've just worked on. Of course. So, um, and certain medicinal things people don't need to take for life. It's like, it's not like you, you know, need them. So sometimes you can just take them during periods of stress of course, and then go off of them, take them. So I'm not one of those proponents of people like you must take all these all the time for life. It just depends what your goals are at a certain point in your life. Absolutely. And I think it's, for me, at least it's important to cycle those, those stuff, you know, to, I, it depends, you know, when, when, when I give some nootropics or I, when I recommend some nootropics to, to people, I say, you know, take them for a month, maybe two months, three months max, then take some um, time off, maybe a week, two weeks, whatever. And then you can do the whole um, procedure again, basically just repeat it. Um, and for example, I was, I was, um, uh, I was visiting this uh, doctor of Ayurvedic medicine from India mm-hmm. Um, a couple of months ago and, and he gave me, he prescribed me some ashwagandha actually. He said, you should take ashwagandha. And I was like, all right, yeah, I'll do it. I mean, I, I have been taking it for a while and I, <laughs> I know how it works. So yeah, I'll do it. And, and, and he gave me some, some ashwagandha he got from India and said, you know, this is like really top quality stuff. It has no, there were no labels on it, nothing. I was like, yeah, I'm not sure what you're selling me here, but okay, I'll try it out. So um, he gave it to me and he said, you know what? Do a three month, a cycle. Take it for three months and takes uh, take three months off because you don't need to take it all the time, and I think mm-hmm. that's that's important here because you know people then think, yeah. all right, now I have to take all those supplements and I'm spending like two, three, four hundred bucks per month for all the stuff that I'm taking, you know, and yeah. I, have to, I have to spend this you know this money every month. It's like no, 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 no. It depends on on your goals, what you want to achieve at a certain moment. If you have issues with stress, of course, then you need to take certain uh, adaptogens. Um, if you're feeling fine, maybe you don't need it at the moment, but at least it's good to know what you can take when you have issues and so on. So um, yeah, people need to be kind of smart about it and, and think like what, are, what, what needs do they have? And then- Yeah, and that's why I like asking people like, what are your goals? Because I mean, my goals for a patient or a client might be different than their own personal goals. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. And then exactly. let's do this. You exactly. know? It, but it's, it's interesting because you know, get so many people 
who say come to me and they're like mention like anti-aging stuff and I'm always I don't want to downplay anti-aging but basically good living is going to be anti-aging so I'm kind of like for like, sure for like, sure oh, can we talk about something else but anyway I'm like okay anti-aging blah, blah, blah. but the thing is like all these like neurotropics and adaptogens are all anti-aging because they all work with things that cause aging you know they work with stress they of work course. with inflammation they work exactly. with all these things so I'm kind of like for the people who are talking about neurotropics and adaptogens, like, and a nice side effect of these. Yeah. It's <laughs> great for your skin and hair and nails. And <laughs> it's going to be really good. So, exactly. Exactly. I mean, that, that's the cool thing about those, those compounds because they have so many positive benefits. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, when, when, when it comes to like synthetic or man made uh, nootropics in particular, I mean, they can do one or two, two, two things maybe. And you're never sure if, you know, what happens if you take them for a longer period. But those herbs have, have been used for like centuries in, in different med traditional and, medicines. And, you know, it's... And the thing is, I, I'm a big, I love herbs. I, I, I studied herbal medicine a lot. And the thing is, the whole plant has different medicinal properties than when you just take out a compound, like the active ingredient mm. of it, because it's made to be eaten basically as a whole and has balancing things. And so that's when you get a lot of the side effects is when you're taking and isolating the active ingredient in a certain compound in a plant. And the other thing is what's cool about all this stuff, it's it's food. I mean, it is cinnamon in anything. I mean, it's a wonderful tasting, you know, spice. It's great. I mean, same thing with like uh, turmeric. I mean, yeah, it is phenomenal question. for neurotropic adaptogenic properties. And it's amazing in curry you know it's just like it's like you can have some curry great, help decrease the inflammation in your knee that's been bothering you from running you know it's like yeah I, I I'm a big foodie and that's the other reason why I always am talking about take things and make it taste good I've seen so many wonderful YouTube videos that are informational and they're having people make these adaptogen cocktails or stuff for libido or stuff for whatever and I'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> oh you mixed watermelon and coffee and chocolate i'm like oh that'll work for vasodilation but oh gross <laughs> yeah like, why would you consume that you know it's i've like, tried some of the things i've tried some some of the stuff um that were just disgusting you know i was like how can anyone drink this on a daily basis and you know, it's just not sustainable you can do it maybe for a couple of days you know if you're really feeling bad but then you know you, you will stop you will stop drinking whatever i, I love the benefits of a cold shower yeah <laughs> but i really don't like taking them yeah so I, do, I do the hot cold hot cold because that's tolerable for me i'm still getting a lot of the benefits i'm getting the circulation but it's doable that way have you tried the, the, the Wim Hof breathing? What? Have you tried the Wim Hof breathing? Yes, I have. But, you know, the first thing in the morning, I don't want to do it. I'm sorry. No, you just... But I have. I've done the Wim Hof breathing and I've done cold plunges. And it's super enjoyable when you're in that mindset mode. Yeah. And it's yeah. great. And the benefits are amazing. And I recommend it to anybody. But I'm just like, in the morning, I just want to relax. <laughs> like, I don't want to. No. I'm like, oh yeah, I need to do my breathing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, what I'm doing now, actually, I'm trying this. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the, the breathing exercise one day and then the next day I meditate and then I repeat this. Mm -hmm. uh, but even though, you know, breathing is getting well easier and easier because in, in the beginning, you know, it was really hard to, to, to do like the three or four rounds because uh, you get all nauseous and, you know, it's, it's kind of a weird effect if you yeah. haven't tried it or for, for, people, <laughs> who have, for, for people who haven't tried it. Uh, but doing the cold showers, it just, yeah, it, it doesn't help. You know? <laughs> you know, the, the breathing before it, it was supposed to help, but it's always, you know, big, I mean, big there's times in my life where I got used to it, where I got very used to the cold shower and I was fine, but I was also living in a warmer climate. That makes a huge difference. Does it? Is it easier? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't, I was thinking like, of course, if it's really hot outside and then the cold shower, it, it's kind of a, it feels good, right? Oh, yeah, I can do it all summer long, but I'm talking ah, okay. about winter when it's, when okay. it's, um, yeah when it's uh, a more mild get climate it. get it get it yeah for sure that makes sense like living in the south of spain it was easier to do it toward you know towards the winter 
than here. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Yeah. I'm not continuing in Bucharest. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, yeah, you're not. You are northern than, than than south of Spain, but you could still go up up north. Where I guess it's even harder to do. We did. I was in Finland once, um, for some business stuff, and we did the traditional smoking sauna, uh, yeah. which is like, I think it's hundred. It was hundred twenty five or hundred twenty degrees Celsius. Um, so it was. I, we were in for like three or four minutes. That was the maximum, and then mm -hmm. went to a lake that had like five degrees. So just about like it, yeah, it wasn't icy but just about it um and then we did we, we repeated this two times basically yeah and that was insane so i i came back to my hotel at about 6 p.m 7 p.m i fell to sleep immediately and i was sleeping for like 14 hours or something like that <laughs> yeah it was like it was shocking like i was i was yeah it was yeah. really the benefits are amazing like i in Switzerland, I would go do the sauna and then go out in the snow and then the sauna. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh, I would love to do that more. But we should do a talk on just sauna and cold plunge because the hydrotherapy benefits of it are amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it also can create an adaptogenic property in your body. It's very good for, for stress, inflammation. Stress, immune support. Yeah. Yeah. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. Yeah. Because that, and that's the other thing about all these adaptogens, because stress will take down your immune system. So right now with the pandemic and everything, it's it's you're taking down your immune system with the stress, leaving you more vulnerable. So adaptogens are very important for helping to to mitigate that and help with the modulating of the immune system as well. And that's why a lot of these things also are considered like are being studied a lot for anti cancer because it really helps with the immune system. So there's more correlative mm -hmm. out yeah. there than, than you know, causative. So we want to be careful when saying that, but it is, there are studies that are showing very good immune benefits to all these things. Absolutely. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. All right, so we have this adaption cocktail that people have tried, that people have to try. Um, all your all your people, I will make a PDF of my favorite adaptogens and right. the recipe of doing it with coffee or with a coffee alternative if they've managed to go coffee free. And side note, if you are thinking about going coffee free and you're on a two to three cup per day, wean down before going cold turkey. Otherwise, you'll get a massive headache two to three days that's after true. giving it up. So. Of don't course. do that to yourself. Of course. <clears throat> yeah, it's a uh, coffee can be quite quite addictive and, and you don't know it until you try to stop drinking it. <laughs> and then well, you realize it. Lasts it. About for like that second or third day, depending on of course. When it kicks in. Of course. Um, awesome. Yeah. So people get the recipe. That's cool. Um yeah. perfect. So yeah. Let's uh let's try this and let's see if it's really better than bulletproof coffee it definitely sounds better in many many ways so i've been experimenting on many people i've done yeah. human trials have you all right Are you, can, can you <laughs> do that in, in romania is it legal to do that there it's legal especially on on dear friends ah, okay uh, can you imagine <laughs> friends, friends and clients actually have have given me very good feedback one everybody's liking the taste Perfect. Of, of it so the taste factor people are enjoying it they're seeing a definite like I uh, just got feedback today, even for like, oh yeah, actually I had complete solid focus for an hour until they decided to take a break. So they could have maybe focused longer, but they said solid one hour focus. They didn't have any crash whatsoever. They didn't need the whole afternoon nap or downtime. Yeah. So that's, that's really good feedback, but that's basically the general feedback because most people are saying, that they're having sustained energy, no crash, and their focus seems to be much better. Sounds sounds amazing. Sound, sounds like something to try. Yeah, so that's good. Awesome. Perfect. By the way, if anyone tries this um, uh, adaptogen, adaptogen cocktail, and I think you should try it, um, just let us know in the comments um, below yeah. how you like totally. it. And if you have some other ideas on um, you know, how, how to change it or whatever, you know, uh, that would be cool to hear. Yeah. 
and if someone doesn't like um, one of the like like cinnamon or something and they try it with something else, let us know because um, I do occasionally put raw cacao in it because, mm-hmm. you know, it's nice. <laughs> um, and that has, of course, different benefits as well, but not as many as cinnamon. I really love the cinnamon for the benefits of cinnamon. Yeah, cinnamon is good. Cinnamon is great, yeah. Yeah. True that. Awesome. Susan, thank you very much. You're welcome. It was think, a pleasure. Yeah, uh, that was very valuable, I think. Um, cool. So let's get this recipe back to, to, to the people. And um, let's see if this, if this trend somehow, if we make this new trend here of, of drinking, um, adapting cocktail. And uh, if someone used this name, it's not trademarked, but it's our name. So sorry. <laughs> we have to change it because like jigsaw does have an adaptogenic cocktail ah okay so we'll change it so yeah we'll, we'll... we'll have to say something like all right coffee adaptogen cocktail or something i'm sure we'll find something <gasps> yeah all right awesome um yeah thank you very much once again um and um yeah let's do this again soon okay yeah take care see you Bye-bye. bye bye